Happy New Year everybody and hope you all had a good festive season, a good holiday period. I'm back at work now, this is my first day back in the office as it were, though I can't pretend that this is a proper job. And that was my attempt at playing the solo from New Year's Day by U2, see what I did there. Now I'm not really one for this mostly bogus self-improvement and self-reinvention stuff that you get round about this time of year. But it does seem reasonable at the start of January to start thinking about ways you might improve and develop as a musician and as a guitar player over the coming year. So I thought I'd do a little New Year's practice themed video for you. I've done a couple of these in previous years. Last year I gave you some quite specific technical exercises to be working on. This year's video is a little bit more general. I'm going to be talking about some general concepts and ideas for practicing that you might like to try. Now not all of these are going to be right for you at any given moment and a practice routine is quite a personal thing. I can't tell you exactly what you need to be practicing but I hope there are going to be one or two ideas in here that are going to grab you. So let's get started. In true YouTube style I've got a top 10 things to practice to make you a better guitar player in 2022. Let's go. Learn the notes on the fretboard. You know it makes sense. And if you don't already know the notes on the guitar fretboard, I think it's probably the number one thing you can do to make yourself a better musician, to really understand the fretboard and to become a player who's not just one of these fret numbers and finger patterns players. You start to really become a proper musician. Now, by knowing the notes on the fretboard, I don't mean just playing a note and then taking a few seconds to work out what it is. I mean instantly knowing what any note on the fretboard is. So you play a note, that's an F sharp, that's an E flat, that's a G, that's a G, that's a B, whatever, whatever it might be. So you can instantly identify those notes. And despite what people on the internet say, you can't learn this in five minutes. There are no shortcuts and hacks. There are various different exercises and things you can do which will help. But really you just have to make this a part of your practice routine. So do five minutes working on your fretboard knowledge every time you pick up the guitar. And to start with you just want to understand the musical alphabet and how the notes are laid out. Then you might do some exercises focusing on learning the notes. Um, a particular favourite exercise of mine is just to choose one note and then to play it on each string as quickly as you can. So if you chose uh, an E note, for example, you can just... Just play one E note on each string up and down F sharp. So give that a try. I have done a video a while back where I talk about learning the notes on the fretboard. So you might want to check that one out. It is an excellent idea to record yourself on a regular basis. This is really the only way that you can listen back to your playing and be a little bit objective about it. You can hear what's good, what's bad and what needs some work. And this is something that I didn't used to do that much and I remember the first time I went into a proper recording studio with a band and I heard myself coming back over the speakers and I realised that I maybe wasn't quite as amazing as I thought I was and you can hear that things were slightly out of time, I had a tendency to rush certain phrases, things weren't properly in tune and it was quite a difficult experience at the time but ultimately it was a really important one because it forced me to go back into the practice routine and work on those weaknesses in my playing. And recording yourself is a really good way to become aware of certain habits you have. So if you record yourself improvising a solo, for example, you might notice that, well, I seem to be emphasising the root note far too much. Maybe that's something I could take a look at. Or a common one is that people tend to fall into the same kind of rhythmic patterns. Maybe every phrase starts on beat one. And as soon as you become aware of that, that's something you can address in your practicing. And it doesn't always have to be negative stuff either. You can listen back to yourself and hear the good aspects of your playing as well. Uh, quite often I always record myself noodling about for half an hour or so and then go back through that stuff and there'll be a lot of rubbish. But there might be one or two ideas in there which I can develop into a song or a riff idea. So try and get into the habit of recording yourself. It can be super beneficial. And it doesn't mean, by the way, that you need some fancy recording setup. You can just record yourself into a phone, use a looper pedal. Though, If you are a serious player, it's not a bad idea to have some kind of basic home recording setup so you can record yourself properly and make demos and things. Perhaps a slightly controversial one this, but it might not be a bad idea to learn to read music, as in standard notation. And I think particularly if you're feeling you're in a bit of a rut and a bit stale as a player, this might be something worth looking into. 
And for me, it's another way of becoming more of a proper musician, getting away from tab and finger numbers and all the rest, and really connecting with the music on a slightly deeper level. Now, of course, you don't have to know how to read music to be a great musician or a great guitar player. And there are plenty of examples of amazing musicians who haven't got a clue when it comes to reading music. But it can be a really interesting thing to get into. It used to be said that if you want to be a pro musician, you should know how to read music. Uh, not really the case in my experience. Some people will say, oh, if you want to be a session player, you must read music. But I've very rarely been asked to read music when I've done any sessions. It's only a certain type of session where you might get asked to do that. Maybe if you want to be in a pit orchestra playing in theatres, that's where music reading is probably going to be essential. But really it's interesting to learn how to read music for your own benefit and improvement as a musician. So give it a try. Lots of ways you can do this. I'm sure there are online methods and courses. Personally I'm quite old school and I go out and get a music reading method book and if you want a couple of recommendations, I mean I like the kind of old school Berkeley books. The Bill Levitt books are really good. So I have no tab whatsoever in these books. So it kind of starts more or less from the beginning with some quite simple music reading stuff and then rapidly gets quite difficult. Um, I think there are also some Berkeley books specifically about uh, sight reading, so you might want to check out those as well. And uh, another one I've got here, this is a Musicians Institute music reading for guitar, that's pretty good. Um, or even just the good old Hal Leonard Beginner's Guitar Book, that's got some simple music reading in it and that will be enough to get you started. How about learning to play a jazz standard? And I think even if you're not a jazz bow, if you're not that into jazz, even if you hate jazz, you can get so much out of learning one or two jazz pieces. You're going to get melody and chords and harmony, improvisation, and it's a really good way to apply your guitar knowledge to start using your triads and arpeggios and scales. And if you've never done this before, I'd start simple. There are lots of well-known beginner-friendly jazz standards, things like Autumn Leaves or Blue Bossa are good starting points, I think. And what you do, say you decide to learn Autumn Leaves, you'll learn the chords, so uh, I think it's usually played in G, I think, so it's very simple. And then you can learn the melody. then you can try playing over it and with something like Autumn Leaves it's actually quite straightforward it's all really in the key of G major and then it moves to E minor which is the relative minor so you can kind of get away with just playing G major or E minor stuff throughout even E minor pentatonic will kind of work for most of that one and then if you want to get a bit more advanced you might like to try playing through it using triads or arpeggios <laughs> So give that a try. There are plenty of chord charts and online lessons for these kind of pieces. You might like to pick up a real book or something. And this is certainly something I'm going to be doing myself. I find that learning jazz pieces is a really good way of challenging myself as a player, even though I'm not really a jazz player. Yes, get a metronome and learn how to use it. And this is certainly something that I've banged on about before. I did a couple of videos a while back called learn to love the metronome and just the word metronome is enough to strike fear into the heart of many a guitar player but it's so important working on timing rhythm it's arguably the single most important element of music and practicing with a metronome is the best possible way to work on your time feel and in those videos i went into lots of ways that you could use a metronome from the very simple through to some quite tricky and fiendish exercises but my favorite is still the classic put the metronome on two and four and then improvise a solo and try and make it feel like you're grooving with the metronome
give that a try. Now, ear training is one of those things that I think most musicians recognise they should be doing, but very few of us actually do it. And I think there are reasons for that. I think it can be quite difficult to know exactly how to work on your ear. And when you do start working on ear training, the benefits aren't immediate or always obvious. And I think part of the problem is the way that many ear training courses are put together. And the traditional ear training course will start with learning your melodic intervals. And you'll learn that, oh, a perfect fifth is the Star Wars theme. Da, 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 da. And a minor third is, is green sleeves. Da, da. And that's all very well. And you can quite quickly get good at these little interval drills. But then when it comes to actual music, this kind of stuff doesn't really seem to bear much relation to what's actually going on. So yes, these kind of interval drills can be useful, but personally I would take a different starting point and I would learn stuff that's actually going to be of direct usefulness to you as a musician right now. So I might start with learning to hear chord progressions, so you know, one, four, five in a blues. So you might start by singing a bass line in a blues. And one, four, one, five, and just really learning to hear the bass line and the root movement of a one, four, five blues progression. And of course the one, four, five are the most common chords in music and you don't just hear them in blues. So just by doing that you're going to learn to make a connection between your ear and music you're actually playing and actually hearing and then you could always expand that to some other chords as well. So I might actually do some ear training videos later this year if anybody's interested in that. But in the meantime there are of course lots of apps and things that you can use for ear training and yeah of course those kind of interval recognition exercises are going to be useful on some level. So things I would recommend would be uh, there's an ear master app which is uh, something that I use fairly frequently and there are loads and loads of phone ear training apps of variable quality so uh, go and seek out some of those and uh, get to work on your ear training. Oh and while I remember it there's a great website called I Was Doing All Right and it's specifically focused on jazz ear training and that is really excellent and well worth checking out. How about trying to develop your own style and find your own voice on the instrument? Now, this is quite a big one and potentially quite a vague one as well. It's not something that you can put on your practice routine and do your 10 minutes and you know tick I've worked on developing my own style. It's more something that you just need to start thinking about and it's something that you can develop and that will evolve over months and years. But at the very least it's worth just sitting down and thinking about the kind of player that you want to be and what is unique about the way that you play. And everybody's got something unique about the way they play an instrument and you just need to recognise that and develop it. And in a way it's a shame that so many players never get past trying to copy and to emulate their heroes. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with that and that's part of learning the instrument but there comes a point when you want to get past that and try and look at what it is that you do differently on the guitar and it's often about specific choices that you make you decide to become a certain kind of player this is the kind of music I'm going to play you know, I approach soloing in a particular way I phrase things in a particular way this is my tone this is the kind of gear I use so you need to make choices with that stuff and also I suppose it's about not doing certain things so it's you know, I'm not going to use this kind of effect or I'm not going to play this particular scale or in this kind of way. And it's those kind of choices that will make you unique and set you apart from other people. And this is certainly something that I've thought about and try and do in my own playing. And it may not always be obvious in this kind of YouTube context where a big part of what I do is to look at other players and to break down their styles and to try and demonstrate exactly how they do things. So I'm trying to inhabit other players styles very often on this channel. But uh, if I'm playing my own music or if I'm improvising, then I definitely want to bring out what's unique about the way that I play the guitar. How about you try writing a song? And it seems silly on this instrument to be spending so much time practicing and working on scales and chords and rhythm, uh, only not to play any actual music. And of course, you can play other people's music and that can be fun, but it's super fulfilling to actually create something of your own. And you might doubt whether you can do this and you might be saying, oh, well, I'm not really creative, but I don't really believe that. I think anybody can come up with something interesting on the guitar. And for me, the starting point is just being playful and just messing around. So if you sit down with half an hour and mess around on the guitar, something is going to come out that might be of some interest. You might stumble upon a chord change that you like or maybe the start of a riff and that can be enough to be the seed of something more interesting and you can certainly develop that into an original piece of music or an original song and it can be an instrumental piece of music or you might like to get into lyrics and then have a proper song and again lyrics are an area where people struggle sometimes I think and 
lyrics don't have to be this amazing poetry or this really profound stuff. I think John Lennon said something along the lines of you just need to sing about what's on your mind and sing it like you mean it and that's enough for a good song. Uh, I think that's absolutely true. So just sing about whatever it is that's on your mind and see what happens. And if you're still stuck, there are, of course, techniques where you can get past those blocks. Uh, a good one is just automatic writing. So just you know writing without stopping for five minutes or so and then sifting through that. And most of it's going to be complete nonsense, but there might be one or two phrases that might be the starting point for a song. Or you could always try the old William Burroughs cut up technique, which has been used by lots of people, famously by Bowie. I think Radiohead might have used it as well where you take found phrases, it might be something that you yourself have written, it might be phrases from books or from newspapers, you literally cut them up, rearrange them into something that looks like lyrics um, and it might be a completely random thing or you might then take what you've got and just tweak it so that some kind of meaning reveals itself and it can be a really good way of getting started with a song, particularly if you're blocked or stuck, so uh, give that a try. It might be a good idea to start a practice journal or a musical log of some kind and often this is what I recommend to my private students is that you actually write down what you're practicing, how long you're going to practice each thing and if you like you can kind of tick off each thing as you do it. You can have comments section and just your experience of practicing metronome speeds, that kind of thing. And it's a good way of staying organized and keeping motivated when you practice. Now, personally, I don't really do that so much these days, but I have recently started keeping this musical notebook. And what I've put in here, it's not so much a practice journal, it's just a collection of interesting musical stuff. So some of it is just quotes and things that I've heard on the internet from musicians, so interesting bits of musical philosophy. Some of it is actual music, so I've got licks and things that I've stolen from other people or licks that I've come up with myself. So it's just a collection of interesting musical stuff and it seems to just keep me fresh as a player. Often you get into that kind of stale phase where you're always playing the same thing on the guitar. You pick up the guitar and you fall into the same old thing but often I'll just flip through this and it's full of kind of what are new and fresh ideas to me at least and uh, it's a good way of keeping myself fresh as a player. At the risk of putting myself out of a job as a YouTube guitar teacher I want you to try figuring out songs, solos etc for yourself off of the records rather than relying on some bloke off the internet or dodgy tabs and the internet is awash with dodgy instructional videos and tabs and that kind of thing and with a little bit of practice you're almost certainly going to do a better job if you do it yourself and there are so many other benefits as well and this kind of transcribing practice is a surefire way to improve as a musician you're working on so many skills at the same time you're obviously working on your ear and ear training but you're developing your understanding of musical form and harmony and scales, melodies, everything is in there and at the end of it you come out with a nice piece of music that you can play and it's very satisfying to have figured it out for yourself. And if you've never done this before just start simple. So start with a really simple song, three or four chord changes, see if you can figure out those chord changes or something with a very simple melody or simple guitar solo. And in the beginning of course it's going to be difficult and it will take time and you might not always get it right but if you persist, if you keep on doing it, it's definitely going to improve and you're definitely going to become a better musician as a result. So that's it for this video and I just want to emphasize once again that I don't expect anyone to use all 10 of these ideas at the same time in their practice routine. I think they're all worthwhile ideas and concepts but you might just want to choose one or two of these, give them a try and see how they work for you. Thanks a lot for watching, I'll see you next time.